Hello guys, it's Vivs here from SlideNerd. In this video, we are going to talk about how to make swipe tabs and scroll tabs using the design support library in Android. Let's take a look at a nice example that we are going to build in this video. This is what the example looks like. Currently, we have a navigation view and then we have our tabs over here with a view pager at the bottom. Let's try to break these components. For starters, we have our toolbar at the top followed by a tab, tab layout a navigation view and a view pager all this ideally comes under a drawer layout if you remember the drawer layout has two items one a navigation view and two a frame layout that possibly contains all these things let's take a look at the connection that needs to be done between the view pager and the tab layout whenever the tab changes the page that is being displayed inside the view pager should also change and when the user swipes the view pager, the tab should also update to display the current active tab. To do that, we are going to link both of them together. Before we do that, there are two things that I would like to point out. First, if you go to Google and if you type slide nerd Udemy, this is where I'll be adding all my how to app series that is on Android, iOS, the Apple Wear and Android Wear. Second, if you go to my channel slide nerd, if you go to playlist, you will find this video along with the rest of the videos right here in the playlist called Android Material Design Tutorials. Be sure to check these two things out. Now let's go back to Android Studio and start coding what we discussed. Currently, I have my activity underscore third dot XML which looks like this in the design preview. If you take a look at the text part of it, you just see a linear layout which is vertical in nature and has a single text view inside it. Let's step by step add our tabs over here. In the beginning, I will remove the text view and add a toolbar. Now, since this is a vertical linear layout, the toolbar is going to be placed right at the top. Notice that I have this app theme where it says app is not recognized. Just hit alt enter or option return and you can import that namespace or create it at the top. So there is my toolbar. You can go back to the design preview and take a look at the toolbar which appears at this gray color at the top. Let's go to the third activity and actually set this toolbar by making its variable. Now notice the import statement here. There are two of them which is the common cause of all problems that you guys usually face. There's an android support v7 dot widget and there's android dot widget. Always make sure that you use the support v7 dot widget because it's going to run even on the older devices. So let's select that and make a variable. After initializing that variable, you can just call set support action bar and the toolbar is going to be set. Since we called the set support action bar method, the toolbar is now seen here at the top. Now for the next step, let's add a tab layout right below this toolbar over here. The tab layout is actually defined as this class here inside the Android support design widget package. Be sure to read the documentation of this class because it contains everything and it is pretty self-explanatory. So we add the tab layout right below the toolbar inside our vertical linear layout. Take a look at these two attributes, that is tab gravity and tab mode. Tab gravity simply specifies what happens to the extra space that is left in case the tabs don't take up all the available horizontal space. There are two values, there is fill and there is center. You can experiment these values for yourself and let me know in the comments what do you think about that. There is tab mode which is fixed and scrollable. I will show you what these two values do, but first, we need to have these tabs constructed in code otherwise you won't see anything also we need to set a background here which we can easily do that by saying color and say color primary over here since the color of the tabs matches with the color of your toolbar so let's go back to code and initialize the tab layout on navigating to the same activity after adding the tab layout this is what you see it has taken up some space but there are no tab names over here and that is because we need to add those tabs on the screen but before doing that, we need to add a view pager here so that we can scroll through some content on the screen. To do that, let's go back to activity underscore third and add a view pager right below the tab layout. So the code for adding a view pager would look something like this. We have an ID, we have given it a width of match parent, a height of zero because we are going to give it a layout weight of one indicating that it should take up all the available remaining vertical space. Now let's go back to code and initialize this view pager with a pager adapter. If you run the app currently, this is what you see on the screen. In other words, you see nothing. And that is because a view pager displays a list of several pages, one at a time. We need to tell the view pager what page to be displayed at the 
given position. And that can be done with the help of a pager adapter. Here I have a class here of type fragment state pager adapter where I have the bare bones implementation. This method here, which is called fragment get item, is going to give you a position and it is going to ask you to return a fragment at that position. For that, we need to create an object of type fragment. Let's make a fragment right below this. So there's my class called my fragment that is an inner class of the activity. I could put it in a separate file if I want to, but to keep things simple, I'm adding everything in the same file. So inside the on create view method, I need to inflate an XML file that specifies how the fragment is going to look or what views or controls it's going to contain. Now I won't be making an XML here, rather I'm just going to have a simple text view that is constructed right here in code. So I construct an object of the text view here in code by passing the context object and I set some text on it, some gravity on it and I return that text view to be displayed primarily inside each fragment. Now let's go back to the view pager adapter and customize how many fragments we need. We want 10 fragments so I'm going to keep the number here as 10. And at this method here where it says get item it is going to give you a position and it is going to ask you to return the fragment at that position. Here we need to construct an object of our my fragment class, which we can simply do by saying my fragment equals new my fragment and return that object at the bottom. Now all we need to do is go at the top and set the adapter. We can do that by saying mpager or take your view pager and set its adapter by calling this method here where you can pass an object of your adapter. Notice that I have created my pager adapter as a variable here and have initialized it at the top before calling anything else. Currently, if you run the app, this is what you see on the screen. There's a view pager that says, hello, I'm the text inside this fragment. You can keep scrolling on and you will see each page. There are 10 pages thanks to our pager adapter. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could actually tell the page numbers over here? We can easily do that by passing an argument to the fragment. Let's take a look at how we can do it. Going to the my fragment class, inside the onCreateView method, we can simply get the argument by simply saying bundle arguments here and call the get arguments method. From this argument, we can get an integer that contains the page number by saying argument.getInt and you need to pass a key over here which we can say arg underscore page. Let's construct that constant by hitting alt enter or option return on your keyboard. And there you get the option that says create the constant field just hit enter so once you create this constant make sure that it is public here inside the class my fragment so i'm going to store that integer inside this variable called page number and here in the my text dot set text part here i can simply assign this page number at the end by saying page number over there now we need to make sure that we pass the arguments to the fragment while constructing it as well the best way to do it is to create a static method here. The method called new instance simply returns an object of your my fragment after accepting a page number. The reason we don't want to give this as an argument to our default constructor is because by default fragments must have an empty default constructor so that they can work properly in the system. Let's go and repeat the same process here. We can construct the my fragment by saying my fragment is new my fragment construct an object of the type bundle set the arguments as the page number inside it by saying arguments dot put integer here use the key that we had our page and put the page number inside that set this by saying my fragment dot set arguments and pass the bundle to it and now return our my fragment object from this method so now we can go back to our view pager and we can use this method for creating the fragment which will also take the page number and set an extra argument so let's go to the pager adapter inside this area where we have constructed this my fragment so notice how i have created an object right now i have taken this int position and passed that position as page number to the my fragment dot new instance this is going to give me an object which i'm going to return and now when you run the app you will see the difference so there's our page 0, 1 and all the arguments that are being passed to each fragment. You can see there are 9 of them because things start at 0. Currently we have no tabs because we have no titles. However, we can get it from our view pager using the pager adapter. If you take a look at its method called get page title here, we can return a string with the position being an indicator of the current title. So I can say something like return tab plus position giving me tab 0, 1 and so on. 
let's go to the top and use the title from the pager adapter inside our tab layout to do that i can say m tab layout dot set tabs from pager adapter take a look at this method here if you use this method you pass an object of your pager adapter and it's going to extract the titles that it needs from the pager adapter itself let's run it and find out so there you go there's our tabs take a look at that we cannot see the titles currently because there are 10 of them and they have been made fixed now this is the case where we can use scrolling tabs or scrollable tabs as people call it let's go to our activity underscore third and change the tab mode from fixed to scrollable and you guys will immediately see the difference and this would be scrollable tabs where you can see tab 0 1 2 and so on and the list continues as you notice a lot of tabs can fit if you're using scrollable tabs and only a few tabs can fit on the screen with the fixed ones now let's take a look at how we can link both of them currently when i click tab 3 or 4 nothing happens to the view pager content at the bottom at the same time when i swipe pages down nothing happens to the tabs at the top let's try to link both of them together when the tab changes you want to update the view pager to do that we simply say m tab layout dot setup with view pager and pass an object of the view pager over here so that the content in the pager can be updated appropriately when the tabs change the other way is when the page changes in the view pager we add an on page change listener where we use the tab layout on page change listener and pass a tab layout object over here so it is linking stuff in both ways when the tab layout changes update the view pager when the pager changes update the tab layout and that's what you do now when you're on the app, let's take a look at what this does. So there's our app running. You click on tab 2. Notice the page starts changing right there. I need mean, to swipe on the view pager. The tabs start changing at the top along with their indicator. Isn't that awesome? This is exactly what we wanted to build by linking the tab layout and the view pager together. There are a lot of attributes that you can customize about the tab layout by going to XML and simply typing tab over here. Notice the number of attributes that give you a chance to customize stuff for example you could say tab text appearance and use a particular style for it which would be text appearance dot design dot tab over there when the tab is selected you can change the tab text selected color by choosing color accent for it there's a lot of attributes like this which you need to experiment and play around with so notice now the current color is orange which is our accent color and as we move through you see stuff happening I won't be covering how to use a navigation view in this since we already did that in the previous video and the concepts are pretty similar. But this basically concludes our tab layout with the view pager. However, a lot of things need to be done. How to compress the tab when the user scrolls down the recycler view and how to make a parallax effect that you see in material design. All these things can be done with the help of the app bar layout, the coordinator layout and the collapsible toolbar layout. And we are going to take a look at these in the next video. In the meantime, go to Google and type SlideNerd Udemy. Check out our social accounts, SlideNerd Twitter and SlideNerd Facebook. And all the code for this video and the rest of the videos is out there if you type SlideNerd GitHub on Google. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.